everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is project number two for my Mother's Day series 2019 and I've got this gorgeous little handbag card. Just how cute is that? And I'll just bring it close up so you can see. I've got these little butterflies that I've fussy cut. This is using the Mariposa first edition paper pack. And you can just see how it looks on the side. The back's just plain. You've got the little handle and it all stands up nicely. And then you just lift up the top here and inside you have somewhere to write your message and you can also here you could pop a gift card so it's entirely up to you what you want to do here you could add you know more stamping you could have a, you could add a little pocket and pop a little gift in there because obviously you do have room so if I hold it like that you can see the space that you've got there so you could have something a bit bulky now the idea is this does fold flat and fit into a five by seven envelope Okay, so the, the height of this here is just under seven inches and it's five inches wide. So obviously if you do pop something in there that's a bit bulky, then you may have to change your envelope option for it. But if I just bring it up there, you can see you've got plenty of room to write your message. And I just think it's a really lovely way to give a card. And that just looks so nice. You can imagine all the other, I say all the other Mother's Day cards, in this case it's Mother's Day, but if you've done that as a birthday card, that has sat amongst all the other birthday cards, it's certainly going to stand out and I think it looks really, really lovely. So dead easy to make. Pop that one to one side. Okay, so I've got a different colour today and I'm using papers from the first edition Gardenia collection, but all those links to what I use will always be shared in my blog post and the link for that is just found below. Okay, so these are my oval dies that I'm using for the handle so I'm just going to go straight into the main case and then we can do all that as we go so you want a piece that is 12 by 5 if you don't have 12 don't worry because what will happen is use a whatever length you've got it just means this piece here will be down shorter so rather than 12, if you're using A4, you're probably going to just be about a quarter of an inch shy because our A4 paper is about 11 and 3 quarters. So it will still close. You can see here, even if it, this piece was a bit shorter, and even if you're coming down to 11, my Velcro doesn't start until... What have I got there? Well, yeah. Well, one inch is the top of the Velcro. So that's 11 inches is here. So you could still put the Velcro where I have and still have this size piece that I'll give you. You might, you might just have to extend this piece and I'll tell you what size you would probably want to go for. But certainly if you're using A4, just keep with the with those measurements that I give you, you know, going forward. All your mats and layers should be okay as well. You might just have to shrink them a little bit. So hopefully everybody will still be able to make this one with whatever cardstock you have. Okay, so along the 12 inch side, you want to score at five and seven, and then flip the cardstock over and score at six. Because now what we're going to do is a concertina fold. So the first fold here, you're going to fold down, the middle one up, and the last one down. So if I pop it on its side, that's what you should have, an M shape. So a mountain valley and a mountain fold. So now when we turn it up this way, there's our base, which is the same there. Okay, that's what we've just created. So that's that piece there all done, and I'm just gonna grab my oh, bone folder and just burnish that all nice. There we go. Then for the lid, so if you're using 12 or even um, a4 size this will still be okay and this is two and a half by five if you do want to extend it then just extend it by a quarter of an inch so it will be two and three quarters okay if you're extending it to two and three quarters then you want to score this score line at two and a quarter if you're sticking to what I've got you just want to score at two okay if you're using 11 inch then I would say that you want to make this piece three inches and score it two and a half and that should be fine okay because what you need to just make sure is that it, this is going to reach down to however short you are with that piece underneath okay it should all make sense and be clear to you as you start making it yourself so let's put this piece together first of all so on the back of this one I've just burnished it and I've just popped some red tape and then I'm just going to take my backing off there and without getting that bit stuck to me, open it up. This is the back piece and what I will do first is if you pop it on this way without the sticky tape hitting against it, you can get it right up to that score line without hitting the tape and then fold it over like so. So now 
you can see it looks like one continued piece of cardstock and now that will come over and form our little closure. Okay, so like I said, yours will just come down a bit longer if you've done it to three to cover if you've only got 11 inch card that you started with there. Then we need to do all of our mats and layers. So I have this piece here and I can't remember whether this was, yeah, so this is the piece that I'm having on the front here. Absolutely beautiful paper. And this is four and three quarters squared. So I've already gone ahead and popped my tape on the back. Okay, and then, so it's going on the front piece here. So I'm just gonna open it up. In fact, get rid of this scoreboard. Don't need that anymore and then just stick this one down. Obviously if you want to do mats and layers then you want this to be plain and then have your pattern on top, then you can do. Just gonna put that one on there, get a really nice border. Absolutely gorgeous print, look at those lovely birds and butterflies. And then open it up and on the inside, right, I need to decide what I was gonna go for because I changed this up last minute. So I've got this lovely, um, inside sentiment here it says it's not what we have in life but who we have in life that matters and this is from an old stamping up um, stamp set that I had so I'm thinking about having this striped paper here and then I've got that and that on top so this bottom piece is three and a half squared this is three and three quarters squared and I'm going to stick that over the top and then that's going to go there and then I think I'm going to have this pattern paper here and like I said this is perfect to stick a gift card on so I think I'm going to have it up that way although it'll be upside down when it's folded the idea is obviously when they open it then the picture faces up the right way so I'm going to have that and that like so and then I'll tell you about the mats and layers for the front in a moment so I'm going to go and get this stuck down Okay, so that's all the inside done. These mats here are slightly bigger. They're four and seven eighths of an inch squared, this one and this one, but you can do four and three quarters. That will be fine. It will give you that border on the front there, but those ones I just wanted to cover more. Okay, so that's that piece. Then we need to cover the top here. So I did have the pattern one, but I think I'm gonna change for this one because I've got this butterfly that I wanna put on it. I just think against that pattern it's not going to work so again just show you the two there I know there'll probably be some of you now saying no I prefer the pattern because I did do the pattern there but then I've decorated it differently this one I just want to do a different way again and again just give you more options really so um, it's entirely up to you okay so that's that piece done and then you want to add your velcro pop it in the middle there obviously depending on one, what length you've got there you'll move it up accordingly make sure everything's straight which it should be and stick that one down and there you have it. Now you could keep it this five by five size and pop that in an envelope. You don't have to add the handle, which I'll be doing later. So again, entirely up to you. So now I've got that for my decoration, for my handle, sorry, along with this here. And I've got these other butterflies, which I fussy cut. And I've just remembered what I did forget to do. Bugger. And that was to add this ribbon and you need to wrap it around that piece of paper there. Now I may, I doubt it because I've really stuck that down and I don't really want to, mm, I just need a little opening either end. Yeah, I reckon I can get away with it. I'm going to keep this bit in just so you can see how I'm going to hopefully save this and add it in. So what I'm going to do is add some wet glue, just a little bit, just to kind of help with that ribbon. Use my pokey tool there just to get it in a little further. Stick that all back down again. I didn't put tape along the actual top piece because, well I just leave it free, I never really put tape along it all. And then I'm going to just trim that right down. Pop a little bit of wet glue again in there. And then, very carefully, I need to trim that down even more. And then fold that under. 
like so. And I hope that it holds, it should do once that glue dries up and because it will dry clear. You should never know that it happened. I'm just going to get rid of all of this. Here we go, so now I've put that ribbon in there, so I managed to save that okay. Next we want to do the handle, so it's entirely up to you what size you want to use. But I'm using these oval dies, which are the Tonic Studio ones. Now, I think I used this one here actually. Yeah, it was. So if you've got this, it's the fourth largest. And then I went down to the straight one, fourth, fifth, sixth, which was the seventh largest. Because the idea is you die cut these like that, okay? Which will give you that thickness. So where that purple one is, that's what I'm going to die cut here. And that's the thickness I'm going to get. So I'm just going to run that one through. Okay, so now you will have this. And that's the same piece that I've done there. And all you need to do is, depending on how high, so this is when you lie it down. So I'm going to use my, well, I'll use my ruler actually. Line your ruler up along the side. And I'm just going to cut this in half. So I want to make sure, because it's an oval, it's a little bit tricky, but I'm just going to eyeball it. I do. And then wherever you stick this, you want to make sure it doesn't go any higher than seven inches. So I'm going to come down to about six and three quarters. And you can see that how that forms your handle. But before I do that, what you then want to do is create, this is optional, but I like to add the pattern paper through there. So all I did for that one is got the next size down. No. Yeah. The next size down from the largest one, which was this straight one, so I'll put that one back in. And then the next one up from this one, which was that one. And then when I put them through, you can see I'm going to get a nice thin, just a little bit of detail just to match. So I'm just going to die cut that one. And there you have it. So it's very thin and small, but it does look really effective. So now I'm going to stick that one in between, so it gives you that nice detail. So I'm just going to... Just pop a thin layer all around there. That's drying up nicely now as well, so I'm glad I managed to save that. And then stick this down on here, like so. Turn it over, snip that off. And then again, just pop some glue onto that. Like I said again, just keep your ruler next to it. This just means that you'll you know you'll get it in your envelope. So I'm gonna bring that down oh, to six and three quarters, which is there. And then I can sit that down, making sure it's nice. Oh it just moved. Oh it's still okay on the back there and it sits nicely actually within where that piece that we stuck down which then moves me onto this piece here which I've cut just to cover it so it's half an inch by four and seven eighths of an inch so I'm just going to stick that one over the top again that's completely optional there we go and then we just need to decorate the rest of it so I've got this happy mother's day and I've got the butterfly, I've got the bow, which I think I'm going to put there, and it actually covers a few more little bits there as well. But I think that looks so, so cute. And then I've got these little butterflies, which are just going to be some 3D ones. See, I'm questioning that big one now, and I'm thinking I'm just going to have those little ones on there. Right, let's stick this bow down anyway, so because I want that to be the same as the one before. So we've just got a little bit of silicon glue, and that one is going to go just there. This has already got some foam adhesive on the bottom. And I always like to pop a little bit of wet glue on there as well. And then that is going to go right up to where that bow is. There we go. And then yeah, I think I'm going to pop these butterflies just randomly 
flying. I think that looks really cute. Again, it's entirely true. I don't know, that just looks a bit too much. Some of you, again, will be saying, no, Sam, keep it, it looks lovely, but we've got to make it how we want it to be, and that's what I think. So, that one there. Silicone glue is really nice for dimension. So, I just fussy cut these. You can see there the silicone glue is this, literally exactly that. And then that one I'm going to pop there, and then this one just there. I really like that. I think they are absolutely adorable. I think they suit so many occasions. Obviously perfect for Mother's Day, but if you imagine for a little girl's birthday, they'd be nice as party invitations. So you open it up and then inside it says you are invited. There's just endless possibilities with these. I think they are beautiful. So they have it. So that's project number two for this year's Mother's Day series. I hope you're enjoying the first two that I've shared with you so far and tune in again tomorrow for another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.